Hello, 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 Lottie Dottie and everybody. I am Tarina Ali, your host of Suds Cafe, and welcome to another episode. And I love being on this podcast, Streets, as they say, and I have a very, very, very special guest. Like, all my guests who come on are special, but like, seriously, this person is very, 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 very special to me. This is my friend, y'all. Hi, friend. Hey, friend. <laughs> None other than Wanza Leftwich. Welcome to Suds Cafe, friend. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So please introduce yourself to the audience. Who is Wanza Leftwich and what are all the yummy things that you do? Sure. I am Wanza Leftwich. I am the founder of Open My Womb Ministries, where we help you take time to build your faith, your family, and your finances. I like to say that we help you defeat infertility naturally, as well as spiritually. And we have classes and um, books and resources to help you do that. Awesome. Yes. And all that she said, uh, she's a wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, Sometimes people just, you know, some kind of say that and embellish that and but I don't have to embellish anything. She is a wonderful friend. We've been friends a long time now. A long time. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> don't tell I a long time. I know, a long time. Uh, the purpose of the Suds Cafe podcast is definitely to have conversation to bubble over into your soul. And this one, I'm sure, will definitely bubble over probably a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We're both God girls. We love the Lord with all our heart and being. And Absolutely. this um, is a space where we just want to uplift and encourage people, right? Who doesn't need uh, encouragement where it sometimes could be a, a dark world? And I've been intentional about inviting guests who bring the spirit of actually this podcast to uplift, to empower, to inspire to all audiences, all races, all colors, all creeds. And we're happy to have you as our second guest. And I thought you were just so appropriate as we're building the foundation of this podcast to help people be vulnerable um, in safe spaces, but also to help people ignite their faith, um, to ignite their level of hope. And yet again, we may have, we are definitely Christians, but I know I have audiences who people who are not, but I still believe the tenets are true that you need a level of faith and hope to live in this world because it can be dark and gloomy. And I believe that you just need something to help you get through because life can just be hard at times. And so we're going to get right into it, friend. Um, So I just want, we want to just really have an organic conversation about like, what do you, how, what role do you think faith plays in helping people cope? with like difficult circumstances in life or when tragedies um, may happen, can like having faith provide strength and resilience um, with the person who may be having challenging times? What do you think about that? Absolutely. I think that, um, so I'm a God girl, like you said, Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that God has given us all a measure of faith Mm -hmm. and that faith can grow. And oftentimes faith grows during times of trial and hardship and unfavorable circumstances. And I believe that if you have faith in God and some people have faith in what they have faith in, but me Mm -hmm. particularly God, and um, he helps you through these different situations in your life, different circumstances. We're not always equipped to handle it on our own. And sometimes our own physical as well as mental and emotional strength, it depletes at times. But when you go to God's word, he fills you back up with the patience, the love, and the strength to endure where you are. So faith plays a pivotal role in my life. And I know that I can depend on my faith to get me through any situation. Yeah. And I often say life is definitely not linear. You're going to have some dips <laughs> highs and lows. Um, and, and I believe you should have some people in your community that you can walk through life with and who can encourage you in your faith when you may see that there's no, you know, no way. Because sometimes we can get so consumed on by what's happening to us and having that outside person. You definitely have been that for me to encourage me in my faith and vice versa as well, because 
you know, sometimes we just will have some hard spaces, you know, some things, honestly, that we've done uh, for our own volition and got in spaces that, you know, we shouldn't have been in. But then sometimes just life happens. Um, and I, as you said, that having a faith, having faith to get through those hard spaces, and we definitely believe going to the word of God. Um, I, I, I've been a counselor for 20 years and I realized everybody will not have the same religious principles that we do have. Right. And so we definitely respect differences, but even withstanding that we all going to have highs and lows in life. I don't care what faith or if not you uh, ascribe to that, like you're going to have valley moments in life. And I just think having faith to believe that things can get better, things that can change will kind of help you and build your, like you said, strength and resilience, because I think about, well, what's the other option, right? If you're not, if you're going to be gloom and doom, like that, that's not going to make you feel good. That's not going to even add value to the situation. And so um, we have to find ways to hope and believe past what we see or even what we feel in the moment. And um, you and I both have personal stories where we've had to have faith and can you because I know you mentioned about doing work around infertility um but can you just share how in that space that how did faith help you in that dealing with that hard space in life so when the doctors diagnosed me with infertility it it was a shock right and so most women who want to have children to be diagnosed with infertility it kind of just hurts your soul yeah. it takes the life out of you it takes the wind from right out of you. And so it's like, well, what am I going to do? And so faith is simply a belief system, right? It's a set of principles that you believe in. Yeah. And if you believe that all things are possible through Christ, then God can handle this situation that I am in. So when I was placed in that situation of the infertility diagnosis, taking tests, having surgeries, going to doctor's visits over and over and over, and the numerous pregnancy tests, what kept me was my faith in believing this set of principles that says I that God will deliver, that God will heal. These are the things that your faith, right? We talked about, like how you mentioned, everyone doesn't have the same faith. But if you have a set of principles that you yes. go by, yes. you go by those principles. Yes. And that is what keeps you yeah. in the mindset that this can happen or that can happen. And so me relying on God's word, me going to scripture saying that the barren woman shall be a joyful mother, me yeah. going to scripture that says that God can heal all diseases. It yeah. strengthened my belief system. It strengthened my faith to continue even through years of infertility. And so yeah. even when things got bad and there's tears and I'm crying and I don't know what to do and there's confusion, Ultimately, my faith says that all things are possible yeah. when we believe. So yeah. I had to keep believing in order yeah. to see the impossible happen. And yeah. sure enough, the impossible happened. I yes, <laughs> indeed. Two beautiful, my nieces, two beautiful daughters. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, faith, like you said, is our shared principles, right? There are principles to believe. And I've worked in many settings in um, one particular hospital settings where um, there are many studies that people would, would do research and even see that many doctors have even said that people who had a level of faith that helped them with whatever medical challenge that they were having, right? Absolutely. It, Absolutely. it, it can give you the motivation to say, hey, yes, this is hard. And so this is basically just what we we're talking about, having these conversations to bubble over in your soul, because you're going to have some tough moments in life. Like we just cannot get around it at all, but having the faith to believe that things are possible and that you can get through it. Um, I think definitely builds that resiliency in you and having a community of people to support you. Um, and, and lines also with faith, I, I think they're akin to each other, which is also hope, right? When you have faith that you're hoping that things will get better, and so they're definitely akin to um, each other. But how can having hope motivate people to persevere? And you were definitely talking about that a little bit. But how can that hope be a motivation to say, hey, there's adversity here, but I can work. I can still work towards goals or whatever I need to do. Right. Sure. Because it, it gives you hope gives you an outline. Hope mm -hmm. gives you motivation to say mm -hmm. 
this can happen. Mm -hmm. And so when you have in your mind that this can happen or my situation can turn around or I'm not going, this is temporary. Mm -hmm. You hope allows you to make plans in a sad place. Hope mm. allows you to make plans for your future mm. in a barren place. When it doesn't seem like anything is working for you, when you have hope, you still take out your journal and write. Mm -hmm. When you have hope, you still pray. When you have hope, you still write about the things that you really want to do and what, what you, the change that you want to see in your life. So mm. hope is a motivator. Faith, mm. you know, hope is a motivator and faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. So you have to put action to it. But when you have that hope, when you say, I'm not going to be here in this situation, this is temporary. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do exactly what mm -hmm. I believe God has for my life, or I'm going to complete these goals. I may have to sit out of school a semester mm -hmm. because I don't have the finances, but mm -hmm. I'm going to work this part-time job, save the money, and then go back to school. Mm -hmm. When you have hope, Hope motivates you to do more mm -hmm. and hope pushes you into your daily destiny. A lot of people mm -hmm. like to say, I'm going to, when I reach my destiny, but we mm -hmm. live out our destiny day by day. Day because by day. what you prayed for two years ago is what you're living in today. And yeah. so hope, you have to use hope as a motivator mm -hmm. and not just like a like, oh, I wish. No, but hope really pushes you into faith and faith pushes you into action. Ah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good, friend. Ah, I love it's just so much you just shared in this, and there's just the tidbit here, but about having hope and faith when things don't go according to plan, right? Uh, right. It's that driving force. And I love how you said, like, if a person was in school and they had to take a year or semester off, right? That can happen, right? It doesn't mean that Absolutely. you won't graduate. Like, <laughs> like we had my happen to my son. We have this idea we have ideas and concepts in our head how things are supposed to be right but that's just not real life but having the hope and faith and saying that it may look different than I envisioned but I still can have the hope and faith believe that it's going to happen right I think sometimes yes, we right. get lost in the process right that the journey one of my favorite words is the journey of it um that the journey doesn't look like what we thought it was going to be right, right? because for one, we're not supreme beings, right? And so, yes, we have wonderful thoughts as human beings, but we don't know it all, right? And so that we definitely have to have the faith and hope. And so what we're talking about really honestly is that faith and hope interrelate, interrelate into each other, right? That they yes. are, I definitely believe, are akin to each other. But um, friend, do you think that having faith makes it easier to maintain hope? And, or does hope, cultivate this faith or is it a fusion of both uh because sometimes like okay well what's the difference between faith and hope and are you similar but can you just dig a little bit deeper think, into that sure i think i think hope leads into faith because if you start to hope right start to think or meditate on the fact that this can get better yeah. faith is more of an action faith is a set yeah. of beliefs your belief system mm -hmm. and the things that you go by, the things that you really, what you believe you enact. So mm -hmm. if you hope leads you to faith and mm -hmm. that faith is displayed by your action. Gotcha. And so you, cause the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. I believe that's the quote, mm -hmm. but if it's not exactly that, because you can hope so much, but if your hope doesn't lead you to faith, then you just, you're just at step one. You're just at yes. hope. And you can really like, crumble hoping yeah. hoping hoping wishing 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 but uh -huh. when hope turns into faith this is what i believe this yeah. and, and faith comes by hearing hearing yeah. the word of god yeah. right mm -hmm. so you have to be able to be in a an environment where you can hear where that where the hope can turn into mm -hmm. faith you have to be where you want to be, even if you're not there. So what do yeah. I mean by that? You have to pick up books of where you want to be. You have to listen yeah. to podcasts like this yes. one of where you want to be. You yeah. have to listen so that your faith could grow. You have to read the word, listen to the word yeah. so that your faith can grow. So that hope turns into faith and that faith ultimately is shown by the actions that you yeah. now take towards your goals and towards whatever you're believing God yeah. for. Yeah. Because it's easy to get stuck mm -hmm. in just hope. Because uh, hope yeah. doesn't really require action. Mm -hmm. But hope can turn into faith. 
Ah, uh, let the church say amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> hope doesn't require you right. You can literally get stuck on hope, but you have to have some action oriented yeah. steps involved in Absolutely. this. Absolutely. You have to walk out. You have this hope. And you say, okay, I'm hoping here. I actually have even a sign on my wall that says hope in my house that I just so happen to look at it, right? So, but hope is actually saying, okay, that's the doorway. Okay, right. you started and you saying hope because some people can't even hope. They're so dismal, right? And, and, and I, yeah. I just hope that this conversation literally bubbles over to someone's soul because some people have literally lost hope. Right. That and life you know has what? So much. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, friend, friend, mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what, what I'm teaching my daughters now, they're both teenagers, right? Mm -hmm. I said, I wish, and I say this often, I wish someone had told me, not let me just learn it, but yeah. told me, literally told me early on mm -hmm. in life that the only thing constant is change. Mm -hmm. And that success, like you mm -hmm. said, is not linear, right? Mm -hmm. Success is not linear. Healing is not linear. Mm -hmm. All not. Life is not not just a straight line and if we began to tell people that early on we would anticipate changes we would anticipate rough times we would anticipate you know when when there's peace there's sudden destruction we would anticipate these things and not be caught so off guard and actually we would be more prepared to pivot when ah, something happens yeah. you'll be more prepared to yeah. have more faith or go pray more yeah. when there is a season of grief knowing yeah. that grief happens because we're all going to die at some point yeah. but the loss of this loved one can really break you down if you yeah. don't have the faith to keep faith. living you know yeah. what I mean so yeah. if we begin to teach that more and to teach that there is nothing wrong with you when you hit mm -hmm. these rock these hard places Mm -hmm. because that's what faith is for that's what god yeah, is for he's there to lift you and it's okay if you're not feeling all the way your best today but knowing that you have hope and faith in god mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. days will get better so i just want us to normalize teaching that it's not linear and yeah. that we are going to go through things and it's nothing wrong with you because everyone I goes really through know. situations in their lives yeah <sighs> Definitely change is the only thing constant. And I think definitely some of us who have been um, raised in religious sectors that somehow it got misconstrued or even missed that you're going to have hardships, right? That's just like, just like you're going to be exempt. Yeah. Like you're going to be, exempt. and that's just not even it lines up with the word, right? That's just not even how life works that we have to have an array of experiences in life to build us up for our level of resilience that we need. Um, it, it just builds character. It builds fortitude. Like tough places build things in you if you allow it to do it, right? Uh, we have a choice in the matter, right? There's nobody who's brow beating you over the head to do anything. And we're talking about hope, the belief, uh, but then have some action steps behind that and say, I'm going to live my life out based on these set of principles that I have, even though it's hard, even though it may take me on a different route that I envision, I'm still going to believe. But then also the caveat is, even if things don't align how you thought, still have faith and hope to believe that things are just going to work out some kind of way, right? I think sometimes we can get stuck in that place of, oh, it didn't happen this way, right? I went to college to get my degree in this, but now I'm, I can't find a job and I'm over here in this, you know what I mean, career, but we can find purpose, I believe, in any place or situation that we're in. We just have to hope the faith and to believe that if I am in this space, how can I maximize it? How can I believe? And how can I not be in a gloom and doom state because it looks right. different? Yeah. And a, and a lot of times we 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 perceive it when it doesn't come out the way we want. Yeah. We perceive it to be oh doom God. and gloom. Yeah. But what what God showed me through faith mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that He has given us all value, mm -hmm. and so if God values you, right, mm -hmm. He is not going to place you anywhere to be disvalued. Uh -huh. So we have to look at our circumstances mm -hmm. in a way that God sees us, the way mm -hmm. faith sees us, mm -hmm. and know that if I am in this situation, it is for a reason, mm -hmm. and I'm not 
I'm not being, I'm not being devalued. Yeah. We have to look at it differently because if we go to school and so for instance, I went to school, you know, Temple University, that's mm -hmm. where we met. And I, my, <laughs> I love that school. Uh, so I had to take a semester off mm -hmm. because one, I didn't have the money. And two, there was a class that wasn't offered to me until the yeah. spring semester. So mm -hmm. whereas all of my classmates graduated on time, I mm -hmm. didn't graduate on time because of mm -hmm. these circumstances, but mm -hmm. I could have looked at it like, oh my God, God doesn't love yeah. me. My yeah. life is a mess. We yeah. we tend to look at disruption as mm -hmm. um, devaluing of who yeah. we are, when yeah. in actuality, God could be placing you on a different path because yeah. he loves and values you yeah. so much. Yeah. And because your purpose is greater, sometimes mm -hmm. we need that that stop. We need mm -hmm. that disruption to build resilience for the yeah. greater thing. Yes. And if we would look at life that way, I'm telling mm -hmm. you, it, it would be so much better. It yeah. would be so much better. So much better. And there's a, a counseling uh, practice because I've been a counselor just for 20 years, but it's called reframing. And I, some of those things is definitely, it's change how you look at a situation, right? Uh, don't look at it from a hopeless place, right? Look at yes. it from a place of hope. Yeah, we have, we have in our mind, we anticipate, you know, we're going to get out of college in four years, but who says that that's how it's supposed to happen, right? right. Like you, you, or, or we put these measures up that, okay, this is supposed to happen in this time frame. I'm supposed to get married in this time frame. I'm supposed to have kids by this time I'm frame. Supposed to have children by this yeah, time. Yep. You know, but it's just hoping to believe that whenever it happens, right? I just wholeheartedly believe that God's timing is best, however that looks, right? And embracing the journey along the way. And some will argue and, and say that faith and hope are are vital, vital, I'm sorry, for our mental health and our emotional well-being. And you know, I love conversations regarding our emotional well-being and our mental health because it's just it's, it's just so key. And so is it vital for our mental health and our emotional being around faith and hope? Um, what do you think, friend? Absolutely, because faith is higher than us, right? Mm -hmm. When we mm -hmm. believe in something that's higher than us, that means we don't have to depend on us mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. We don't, I don't have to depend on Wanza to do yeah. everything and make everything happen. Does mm -hmm. Wanza have to, do I have to participate? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do I have to do what I need to do in my life? Absolutely. But when I believe that God is directing my path, I can depend on him to mm -hmm. direct my path. When I, if I believe that God is sovereign, then mm -hmm. he knows everything. He mm -hmm. has me, he has me in the palm of his hand, like we like to say, and he's not going to just let me fall or stumble for no reason. Yeah. As we, you know, yeah. it's everything is going to come together. This is not just happenstance. So if I believe, right, because everybody might not believe like we believe, but they're watching. If you believe that there is something greater for you to do or for you to be, then this is not the end. So you don't have to hold on to just what you're thinking and who you are and the power is just solely yours. No, the power is in the one that created you. The power is in God, the one who directs you, the one that makes all things possible when we believe. Our task is to believe and that's what faith is about. Faith is believing and that goes for any religion, right? You you have to believe the tenement, the tenets of that religion in order mm -hmm. to receive the promise of that religion. So mm -hmm. it's not just about you and you don't have to hold on to just you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can it impact your, like, say, for example, your emotional well-being and meaning that. Say, for this is why I say if the opposite is gloom and doom, right? That doesn't make you feel good, right? It makes you feel heavy. It makes you feel burning down. It makes you feel low. Yeah, we'll have moments where we're not always in the clouds, right? However, for the most part, we have to have this level yet again of resilience and hope to push past feelings in those moments. Mm -hmm. And I, I definitely have seen it that it can start in, impacting your psyche, your outlook on life. You can become disgruntled. You can become mean and, you know what I mean, and cynical. Um, and it just really, it can uh, impact your countenance, like how you look. Like sometimes, you know, friend, have you ever seen people, they just honestly look miserable, right? We're not calling names right. or anybody, but sometimes right. people just look really miserable. 
I, I, I believe that what you're feeling on the inside definitely can reflect how you look on the outside right. and it can start impacting your psychological being where right. you're just not believing in the principles of God. You're relying more on self or, or not believing that your circumstances will change. And then your mood has changed. Your temperament has changed. You can be, my mother used to use the word ornery. <laughs> you know, you just ornery. But, but it, it definitely, so we just have to, I think, be very careful um, not to fall, wallow in this pit, right? right? Where we're, it's starting to impact how we interact with others and people don't necessarily want to be around people who are just really gloom, you know what I mean? Right. Gloom and doom all the time, you know? And what, and what, what you believe ultimately comes out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. what mm -hmm. you believe ultimately comes out. So I can be a Christian, but still be a sad and, de and depressed Christian because I Ooh. don't believe what God says about the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's well, pause right there. We can't we can't go past that too fast, right? Like <laughs> that that if we was I don't know if we so tweetable. Like we can't go past that real fast. Say that again. You can be say that again. You can be a depressed Christian. Uh you can mm -hmm. be a depressed Christian. Mm -hmm. You can have um low self esteem as a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just because. Right, you receive Christ and Christ yeah. has saved you, but you also have to believe what the word says, right? The joy yeah. of the Lord is my strength. Or if you're dealing with low self-esteem, the Bible says, mm -hmm. I am fearf you are fearfully and mm -hmm. wonderfully made. Marvelous are his works. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough to just say, Okay, oh, I have faith or I believe. But when you believe, faith is action. Faith, mm -hmm. you you take on the tenements of of the word you take on the the, the precepts the principles yes. and yes. you begin to live by it yes. and because faith is not seen and faith is yes. not um sometimes faith is not i, I want to say like tangible mm -hmm. faith is what you believe and then it becomes tangible yes. so if you're dealing with low self-esteem if you're dealing with depression uh, for those who are Christian, our way is to get into the word and mm -hmm. use scripture to mm -hmm. combat those feelings you know yeah. you can go to therapy and all that mm -hmm. good stuff and counseling so we're not opposed to that mm -hmm. but as a belief system what does god say about who you are and why do you believe differently so mm -hmm. it's it's an accountability piece as well yeah. um when you have faith to actually use the tools of your faith yeah. to enhance your life yeah. You have to use those tools. You have to dig into the word and says, what does the word say about me? Or mm -hmm. why do I feel depressed? Or why am I down? Or why am I struggling mentally for this reason or that or the mm -hmm. other? And faith says, I'm going to go to the word of the Lord and see what God has to say about me. The Bible says, I know the plans that I have for you, thoughts of good and not evil to give you an expected end. So if, if the Lord says that about you, why do you always feel doom, gloom, and like nothing is going to work out when he has already declared already, that yes. he's his thoughts of you are good and not yeah. evil to give yeah. you an expected end. And then the Bible also says that the scriptures cannot be undone. Right. Mm -hmm. So the word cannot be reversed. God is sovereign. And if he has already blessed you, no man can curse you. And so you can walk in the blessings of the Lord. You have to believe. Right. You have to believe in what you're believing in. Yeah. And practice um, that system of belief. Yeah. And 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 it's so, so, so critical as, as we're wrapping up. Time just goes by so fast. We could talk <laughs> for hours about this, but it is so critical to definitely declare those things and to have faith and belief because it definitely will pack your mental health and well-being that you can be whatever religion or even no religion at all, right? And right. have a, a pessimistic outlook on life where you have no hope for whatever, where circumstances have happened and you've allowed those situations to beat you up, right? right. That it you're grows. not seeing, yeah, yeah, and it can roll and it can fester um, and, and we definitely know the impact of that, right? We know um, people have taken their lives, right? We know that people aren't, aren't joyful anymore, right? We've seen the fruits of, of those things, right? And I believe sometimes those are the fruits. Um, I'm an advocate, definitely a uh, part of my company is Jesus in therapy too. I'm, I'm an advocate and I'm a staunch believer in that. 
However, um, as we are closing up uh, this final round robin uh, question that I had is that there are many entities that we were talking about who are rather religious or not, but having something to look forward to, whether, like you said, if it's this podcast, if it's something on YouTube, what are you ingesting? I, I think that is just so important. If you are ingesting so much about negativity and woe is this and that, you're not, you're going to have a challenge in that space of having hope and, and belief. And so I'm just an encouraging people take a look at what you're consuming daily in your content on Instagram or all the social media platforms. Like there are many, many books out here, even if you're not reading the word of God, which we hope you would, but find something that's going to uplift you, right? Find something that's going to give you some information to help when those hard spaces and days um, come along because they're going to happen. But what roles can faith-based communities or even secular communities, uh, friend, help foster that faith and hope and build that strong community of encouragement and hope for people, especially during hard times? Sure. Community is so powerful, right? Mm -hmm. Community. And I think we don't, we don't value it enough, yeah. whether you are going in person, whether mm -hmm. you're on a zoom meeting or yeah. whether you're dropping in a yeah. Facebook group, getting, getting the best out of life is being mm -hmm. around the people mm -hmm. who you want to be like, or aspire mm -hmm. to be like mm -hmm. you can. And I, let me just say this really quickly. When I was going through infertility, mm -hmm. um, I remember God saying to me, cause I was in every blog and infertility mm -hmm. blogs and things mm -hmm. of that nature. And he said, get out of these groups, get out, get off of these blogs that always talk about infertile myrtle and the, the mm -hmm. downside of infertility yeah. and go hang out around the people who are pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Go hang out around life. Go mm -hmm. hang out on the websites that talk about pregnancy, yeah. how to get pregnant yeah. and different things like that. So you have yeah. to be around what you aspire to or what you want your life to become because yeah. likeness begets likeness. I we agree. produce after we produce fruit after our own kind. Mm -hmm. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. And uh, I think definitely think that being in community like-minded communities yeah. uh, is, is very key and uh I, there's this uh friend of mine I went to um high school with and she will always post such positive things on um, Facebook all the time and at this particular time I was going through uh, a divorce uh many about probably about 10 12 years ago at this point and everything about that she said was positive. And in that space, I was not happy at all, right? Of course, going to divorce for me, it was not a happy space for me. And I had lost a level of hope. I was discouraged, but I just kept reading all of this positivity that she was saying. And I I, I told her this before. I said, um, you're not going to share. I don't think she would mind me sharing Patrice Jones is that I said, either I'm going to unfriend her on my <laughs> Facebook page or I have a choice whether to start buying into this, right? I had a That's choice so because, so because it just, I, I just don't believe light and darkness can dwell in the same choice. place. You right? have I, and choice. I had a choice of either to, to go down that, you know, angry patty road and stay there, but it wasn't helping my mental health. It really wasn't. It was making me even more madder and depressed. And so I had a decision to make, right? I had yeah, to okay. say, Hey, I don't like how this feel. And I, and I, and that's why it's just so important to surround yourself with things of likeness, you know, of, of, of light and, Go through your feed and, and on your social and, and see what you're ingesting, right? It, right. I, I honestly say, if you look through the feed of what people are following and ingesting, ingesting you can not make 100% things, but you can kind of see. I wonder, I, I see how you think like that, right? right. I see how Absolutely. you're responding like that because Absolutely. it's what we are ingesting. And so there having that community of like-minded people is so key. And it even could, like you said, yeah, go ahead, friend. It's like what you said, Trina, it, light and dark can't be in the same place. Yeah. If I come yeah. in a bedroom and turn on the, it's dark and I turn on the light, yeah. the darkness 
immediately goes it away. Goes. Yep. So yep. it's like what you said, if you're in a community, mm -hmm. right, you can go into this community sad or you can go into this yeah. community broke or, mm -hmm. or low. But yeah. like you said, you kept seeing this one woman's post yeah. and that you had a choice to make. It's yeah. a decision. And a lot yeah. of times we don't feel empowered to make this decision because yeah. we feel like life is just life. In. Yeah. But life is full of decisions. Yeah. And yeah. once you decide to get more light on this situation, mm -hmm. that darkness has to leave. It may not leave yeah. that day, but it will steadily leave until you find yourself in a new place. I mean, yeah. I love that. I, it's just yeah. like, you know, I just love that. I love yeah. that so much because light and darkness cannot be in mm -hmm. the same place. Like the Bible mm -hmm. says, blessing and curses should not come out of the same mouth. Yeah. Like you can't do both. You can't have it mm -hmm. both ways. So yeah. you have to, if you find yourself in a low place, you have to be able to choose faith and yeah. say, faith it's, is going to lead me out of this. It's yeah. a choice. It's, it's a choice. And even if you don't feel it, and even if... Oh you don't see it in those moments let your words align up with what you desire right and i think that's sometimes Absolutely. that where the struggle is is that yes your situation may be dark and it is we're not dismissing that there are some hard things that people have to endure in life i've had my share of those i've cried crocodile tears over some spaces have been stuck in life, like put you to the your knees on the floor, like in the fetal position, like God, this is hard. And one of them for me was definitely like losing my child. Like that thing just crushed me. Losing my mom, that thing just crushed me. However, even withstanding that, okay. I made a decision say, yes, this is hard. Yes, it is hurtful. But I had to be around a community of people who could push me like that's just an important and power of your words being in spaces where you may not have the power to say that yet and that those are real things right sometimes you real just thing. may not be able yeah. to say that just yet but being in the space of the community who other people are saying those things so it could come through your social media page it could come through some books that you're reading i have sometimes scrolled somewhere on social and somebody says something, I'm like, I needed that in this moment. And so I just think it is just so key um, that we have more conversations like we're having today to bubble over into our soul for when those definitely low moments that will come, that yes. you will have some fuel in your tank <laughs> to help you get through. And I think that's that's just what happens sometimes is that we haven't built up our reserve with whether it's the word of God. You have to build up your reserve with something for when life is going to happen, those difficult spaces, because we can navigate. I always say to my clients, we have a, we do a good job a lot of times of navigating through the good things in life, through the good spaces in life. But really the test of it all is when things aren't going as you plan and when life does happen when tragedy does happen when trauma does happen we can stay in those places and still have a dark outlook but mm -hmm. be encouraged today from this conversation that there is hope available right that even if you don't see it even if you don't feel it still have hope and, and faith and believe um that no no matter what you can endure hard spaces, endure hard things. And so any final thoughts or words, friend, um, as we come to a close? Um, I just want to encourage you to choose hope, to mm -hmm. choose faith, yes. and that life is hard at times. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like Trina said, we all go through different circumstances, mm -hmm. grief, the loss of family, the loss yeah. of loved ones, yeah. jobs, money, um, things that you never thought you would go through. But choose to live another day choose yeah. to know yeah. that it can get better and with faith it can hold you up and you can be resilient uh -huh. and you can bounce back yeah. choose it over every negative feeling yeah. i promise you it's it will get better it will get yeah, better it's it like definitely better. will thank you friend how can people stay connected with you Sure, I am Wanza Leftwich on all platforms, or my family platform is Life with the Lefties, Life with 
Left with family. Um, so on all platforms, YouTube, TikTok, I'm everywhere. Just look up Wanza. I'm sure I'll come up. <laughs> yeah. Same here. I'm Serena Ali on all platforms. I'm not on Snapchat, but I'm on all the others. And we would love to stay connected. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Suds Cafe, where conversations bubble over into your soul. See you all next time. Have a good one.